Hello, developers and architects. Today, I want to introduce you to one of the coolest and I think most powerful pieces of technology I've come across in recent times. And no, it's not Rust. It is Cloudflare Durable Objects. Have you ever needed to coordinate multiple clients or multiple users whilst also coordinating state and managing infrastructure in the back end, ensuring that the multiple clients and users that you have are communicating in a transactionally consistent way with some kind of shared state in the back end? Yeah, it sounds like a complex task, doesn't it? And that's where Cloudflare durable objects come in. Taken from the Cloudflare website, Durable Objects provide a powerful API for coordinating multiple clients or users, each with private, transactional, and strongly consistent storage attached. Sounds useful, right? Out of the box, you get in-memory state, a transactional storage API, and managed WebSocket connections. Each instance of a Durable Object is also inherently single-threaded, giving you an incredibly simple programming model all built in, all managed for you at global scale. In this video today, you're going to see how you can leverage this powerful technology in your applications using Rust. Interested? Let's get into it. And inside the sample app, for which there's a link in the GitHub repository below, this is the application you will get. And I just wanted to show you very quickly which bit of this is using durable objects. So as you saw in the last video on using D1 databases, there's actually an element of storage in a more traditional database. When you log into the chat application, you see you have a list of all the chats that are available. This comes from the main database. Once you actually join a chat though, if I join a chat in this window and join the chat over here, everything now is using durable objects. All the communication now is running through WebSocket connections inside the durable object. So I can communicate in both of these windows. Hello to you as well. All of that is now being passed back and forward through a durable object instance. Each chat has its own instance of a durable object. So if you think back to what I said at the start, where I'm talking about single threaded and managing state, managing transactional boundaries, all of that happens inside a durable object and a durable object in this case relates to a chat. So let's have a look at the actual code base and see how this works. So as I covered in the video on building APIs with Cloudflare Worker, you've still got this lib.rs file. This is the actual entry point for all API calls. This is where you'll map up the individual endpoints of your API. And you'll notice there is actually an endpoint on the main worker for connecting to a chat. So if you make a call to slash API slash connect and then the idea of a chat, this is then going to call this handle WebSocket connect. This is where the actual WebSocket connection is going to be set up. And the first thing you're going to do here is to check that this is actually a WebSocket request. If it's not a WebSocket request, that's indicated by the upgrade header being set to WebSocket. You're going to return because this is not a WebSocket connection. This is just a standard HTTP request. Then there's some data here to actually verify that the user is logged in. We can just skip over that for the minute. That's just simple JWT authentication. And then things start to get really interesting with these lines of code here. This is where you're actually starting to connect to the durable object. Now, when you define a durable object, you will set that up in your wrangler.toml file. You will create a binding for your durable object. Here, I've got a binding that is called chat room. And then you bind that to a class in your application code. So now in my code, there is going to be a class or a struct in the case of Rust called chat room. Looking in the source folder again, there's this chat room.rs. And in here, there is a chat room struct that has this durable object macro assigned. This is what tells the runtime that this chat room struct is going to be used as a durable object. So like a lot of things in Cloudflare, everything here is just a binding. You're binding the name chat room to the chat room class in your code base. So you're going to pull that chat room binding from your context, and then you're going to actually load a specific instance of the durable object. This is what gives you that boundary. And here you're using the actual chat ID to grab that boundary. This is how you get this shared state. If multiple front end clients all try and connect to the same chat ID, they're all going to connect to the same instance 
of your durable object. Once you've got the durable object, you can then call the fetch endpoint on your durable object the same way you would do worker to worker communication inside Cloudflare. So that all there is here inside our actual worker code, our actual API code to set up the connection to the durable object. Once this fetch call is called inside your actual worker code, that is where you will then need to jump over to your main durable object. So again, there's a struct defining your code base. That struct is defined as a durable object. And then you can actually define a fetch function on your implementation of the durable object. And it's this fest fetch and it's this fetch function where you would actually put any business logic. Now, the only business logic we need in this durable object here is to actually set up the WebSocket connection. So to recap exactly what's going to happen there, your front end is going to make a request to your main API. Your main API is going to check that the request is authenticated and then proxy that request onto the specific instance of your durable object. Remember, the instance of the object relates to a specific chat room. You're then going to hit this code here, the fetch function inside your durable object. And this is where you can actually handle the actual connection to your durable object. So if we go and have a look at this handle connect code now, this is where you'll actually start to set up the WebSocket connection. But you'll notice inside this handle connect function, you actually just create a WebSocket pair. And then the actual durable object itself has functions on itself to actually accept WebSocket connection. So we're gonna create a new WebSocket pair. And then in the state of this durable object, remember durable objects manage state, there is a function to accept the WebSocket connection. So here we're gonna create a new WebSocket, accept the connection, and then we're gonna add some data. We're gonna add some attachments to that WebSocket connection. We want to attach the actual user ID to the specific data of the connection, then we can actually return a response from the WebSocket. This is gonna now send the response back to the client to actually set up that bi-directional connection between the front end and between this instance of the durable object. Remember the worker, the one that's in the middle just acted as a proxy. Now the connection is directly between your front end and your actual durable object, the instance of it for your specific chat room. So the main thing is in your actual code for your durable object on the self, you have lots of functions on self.state to actually manage the WebSocket connections. One of the other really cool features of durable objects is this idea of alarms or alerts. So you can actually configure a durable object to automatically expire after a certain period of time. And that's exactly what happens during, that's exactly what happens with our chat rooms. As a default, each chat room is only available for five minutes. And that is a sliding five minute window. So every time someone connects or someone sends a message, that five minutes resets. You can again use the state function on self and you can call state.storage.setAlarm. After that period of time has elapsed, Cloudflare is going to automatically tear down this instance of the object. And then every time either a user tries to connect by calling this fetch function or whenever a new WebSocket message is received to this specific instance of the durable object, you are then going to update the chat expiry to give you that sliding five minute window. This is a really useful feature. If you are doing things that need to time out automatically, you can just set that up inside your durable object and Cloudflare will manage automatically tearing that down. Now, of course, one of the things you're going to need to do inside a WebSocket connection is to accept a new message. You need people to be able to send messages over the WebSocket connection to your backend, but also from your backend out to your front end. Against the actual implementation of the durable object for your chat room, you can implement this WebSocket message function. This is what allows you to actually handle receiving a message that a client might send. A message can be either string or binary. So we need to first check is, it, is the incoming data a string or binary data. And then depending on which one it is, we can deserialize the data either from a slice or from a string. If And if that message is somebody typing a new chat message, the type of message that comes from the front end is new message. And then we can then call this new message to actually handle that message that has come in. In our specific web application, the only way a user sends a request from a client to the back end is if they are sending a new message, they are typing a new message. If, for example, you have lots of different use cases, lots of different business logic, 
this if statement might be better being a match statement, or you might just have a lot more conditions here to see what is the type of message that is coming from your front end. That message type property is something that is actually set in the front end application. If you have a look at the actual JavaScript code for the front end application, when a message is sent on the WebSocket connection, remember the data traveling over the wire is just traveling over the WebSocket connection. You need a way to distinguish what type of message that is. That's handling requests that are coming in from the client. To handle them requests, you simply handle the web, you simply implement the WebSocket message function. What about in the other direction though? What about sending messages out to the client? Well, of course, our chat room, when I type a message, anybody else connected to the chat room also needs to see that message as well. And that's what's handled in this new message function. This is actually going to load all of the messages from the state. And this is one of the ways Judable Objects does state management. On your self, on the Judable Object itself, you have this state property and state can have storage. You can get things from storage. You can set things in storage. So here, what is going to happen is when these messages get loaded, you're actually going to load a VEC of messages from the state of the object itself. This is like interacting with in-memory state. You're loading all the messages that are in memory. So you're going to load the messages because of the limits that durable objects have. We're only actually going to hold 100 messages in memory at any one time. Any more than 100 messages will just get dropped. So that's what's handling here. And then the first thing when we receive a new message is we're going to actually update the state of the message. So much like we did state.storage.get, here we're doing state.storage.put. We want to put the messages in the state of this durable object. And then we can actually load all of the WebSocket connections. So you can do self.state.get WebSockets. This will give you all of the current connections that are currently connected to this instance of your durable object. Remember, you can have multiple instances of the durable object for multiple chat rooms. You're going to iterate all of them connections and then just do the connection.send to actually send the data down the pipe to the front end. You'll notice in all of this code, there is no connection management. There's no need for me to like query a database or to do any jumping through hoops to make sure that actually multiple clients aren't trying to update the state at the same time. This is all managed by Cloudflare. I can do self.state.get, self.state.put, self.state.get WebSockets, and then I can iterate over all of the WebSockets to actually send a message back to my front end. There's a, if you ever worked with WebSockets before, I tried to build something with WebSockets, there's, a, there's an awful lot of things that you need to think about that you no longer need to think about anymore. Couple that with state management, a transactional API, and you've got a really useful way of building applications. So to really quickly just run through that again, I realized there was a lot of information there that came at you very, very quickly. So all durable objects are going to be a struct in your code base that have this durable object macro. You can then inside your implementation of that durable object, implement the fetch function. And this is what your actual worker is going to call. Your workers are going to load an instance of a durable object, and then they're going to make a call to that durable object. In this instance, all we need to handle is the initial connection because once the WebSocket connection has been set up with a specific client, all of the message passing back and forward can then run over that connection as opposed to needing an API call. If someone made a request to this durable object on anything but the connect path, then the durable object would not do anything because there is nothing to do. It would return a 404. When you actually handle the connection, all you need to do is run this accept WebSocket, self.state.accept WebSocket. You can then return that WebSocket connection back to your front end. That will set up the connection. And if you need to do communication back to all of your clients, you can use the self.state.get WebSockets function and then iterate all of the active connections using the send function to actually send data down the pipe. All of this maps to your API code using bindings, much like many of the Cloudflare services. So what does this actually mean for you as a developer? If you think about scenarios where you need to manage state for a given object, a given thing, imagine chat rooms like this, multiplayer games, even things like managing the basket for an e-commerce website, each individual basket could be its own durable object. The instance of the durable object could be linked by the user's ID. And that way, whatever device a user connects from 
they're always going to get the current version of their basket. You don't need to manage anything on the back end. Cloudflare are managing all of that complication for you. Now, of course, Cloudflare does have some limits. You can have unlimited objects in your account. You can have unlimited instances. If you add 100 customers, 1,000 customers, a million customers, all with their own baskets, Cloudflare will give you unlimited instances of an object. But the storage in your account can't go over 50 gigabytes. So if you had 100 clients and they were all storing a million gigabytes in memory, well, you're going to start hitting some problems. There's also a soft limit of 1,000 requests per second per durable object. And the data you store in state in memory can't have a key bigger than two kilobytes or data bigger than 128 kilobytes. So there are some limitations to think about. They're all documented on the Cloudflare website. I'll put a link to them in the description below. But next time you need to manage state across multiple clients, multiple backends, multiple systems, and you need to do that in a way that gives you persistence, gives you in-memory state, gives you WebSocket connections, real-time communication, well, consider durable objects. They're an incredibly useful way of building. Thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next video.